Hello, in this presentation I want to talk about the word grace. Here is what I believe grace is all about in the Bible. But before I say that, I want to put some perspective on this whole thing. I came across a cartoon the other day which would throw some light on what we are talking about. There was a shop in front of which there was this particular board which said 50% off. 50% off. And here is this gentleman who goes in and he is looking for an umbrella. He goes to the shelf that has the umbrella display and he finds neatly packaged umbrellas. 50% off. He checks the price, really 50% off. He picks up an umbrella, comes back home and he opens it and this is what he finds. 50% off. Logicians would say this is equivocation. You are using the word 50% off in two different senses. That's exactly what's happening in the world today regarding the word grace. People are using it in, to mean different things. The word has lost its meaning. And here is what I want to uh, bring out at this particular time. The group that's highlighting grace a lot. What are they talking about? They are saying that it is all to do with the finished work of Jesus Christ. You can't add anything to it. You just receive it by faith and that settles it. Do I believe it? Yes. Then the group goes on to say, everything, salvation, sanctification, glorification, everything has to do with the finished work of Christ. You can't add anything to it. Do I believe it? Yes. Then what's the whole argument about, you may say. The other group is saying, to talk about grace like this is highly irresponsible. Uh, you, you don't qualify what the Bible is talking about in terms of a Christian regenerated life. And this is cheap grace, a grace that does not talk about discipleship. And the debate goes on and on and on and on. I think I will state my position like this. I want to call you listeners to consider the Bible. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to preachers. Get back to this insofar as what they teach confirms with the whole counsel of God, you accept it. Otherwise, you're in trouble because the Lord Jesus himself says, narrow is the way that leads to heaven and very few will find it. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many travel down that. And so, here is uh, the whole counsel of God on this matter. Shall we turn to the book of Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. Here the writer of the book of Hebrews is talking about what the early church taught as fundamental doctrine. Early church, fundamental doctrine, you can't get uh, closer to the uh, Bible than this. And the list goes like this. I'm reading from Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. Therefore, leaving the elementary teachings about the Christ, let us Press on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. Please note, repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. These are joined together, repentance and faith. What God has joined together, let not man, any preacher, put asunder, because what God has joined together in this is repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith towards God. Now, let's turn again to the book of Titus. And we see that in Titus chapter 2, verse 11, we see this verse, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires, and to live sensibly, righteously and godly in this present age. Note, I'm reading from Titus chapter 2 verse 11 and 12, verses 11 and 12. For the grace of God, we are talking about grace here, has appeared bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously and godly in this present age. Now note, grace does not give us an allowance to live any way you want. This verse from the Bible says, grace has been given so that we turn 
from ungodliness, we say no to it, and worldly desires, and live sensibly, righteously, and godly in this present age. This is close to how the Lord Jesus Christ presented the gospel. The gospel that the Lord Jesus Christ presented is found in the book of Matthew, the gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 2. He says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repentance and the good news. Repentance and the call to believe in him. Matthew 3, 2. This is the gospel that the author himself preached. The Bible says, it is the word of God that will finally judge us. It is not the word of man. There will be no preacher there on judgment day to whom anybody, anybody can appeal. It is going to be the word of God. And the word of God is very clear that the gospel has to do with a turning away from the world and a turning towards God. And Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And um, again in Matthew chapter 16 verse 24, Jesus says, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. This is the gospel the Lord Jesus Christ taught. And this is what is echoed in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 where it talks about repentance from acts that lead to death and faith towards God. And again in Titus chapter 2 verses 11 and 12 where it talks about uh, grace being revealed so that we say no to ungodliness. The believer says no to ungodliness and worldly passions to live self-controlled, upright and godly life uh, in this present age. And so, dear friends, this is the whole matter. The gospel is by faith. The gospel has to do with trusting God with your life and you can't pay for it by yourself. Everything in the gospel has to be paid for by God. Then where is all the saying no to ungodliness and all of that fit in? You must understand there are three things that are happening right now which scholars tell us. Salvation, sanctification and glorification. All from this one package. You look at it, um, this is how it goes. We are saved from our sins. We are being saved from the power of sin in terms of practical Christian living. None of us have become like Jesus Christ. We are moving on by through the renewing of our mind and obedience to the Holy Spirit of God, bearing fruit of the Spirit. We are being sanctified and one day we shall be like Jesus. We will be glorified. And all this has to do with the work of Christ on the cross. We can't contribute to it. At any given particular point of time, if I am saying no to sin, I can't say no to sin unless the Spirit of God inspires me to do that. And I cannot stand in that position unless the Spirit of God strengthens me to do it. So at the end of the day, I have nothing to glory in. It is initiated by God strengthened by God to accomplish. That's why the whole Christian life is by grace through faith. Even though I may be saying no to several things, it is because I have said yes to the prompt promptings of the Spirit of God and I stand only because He strengthens me. There is no ground for me to boast and one day He shall make me to be like Him. This is the Christian hope, dear friends. We cannot take grace out of context to say, I can live life any way I want. Because Titus chapter 2 verses 11 and 12 tell us, no, this is not what the Bible is talking about. And finally, I'd like to take you to the book of Galatians. I'm reading from Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. But I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. Walk by the Spirit and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. There are two warring desires inside of you. There is the flesh, there is the spirit. And we have to say no to ungodliness and say yes to the promptings of God. Dear people of God, Christ-like character can come only when we say yes to the spirit of God. In this raging debate that is going on, please understand what is being passed around is not grace, but it is grace 50% off. It is grace 
which is truncated. It is grace that does not bear resemblance to the biblical view. And what people are holding is just half the truth. And the half truth is always more dangerous than an outright lie because an outright lie can be shown to be false. But a half truth is very difficult to deal with because there are elements of it which are true. But you have to hold together what God has put together. As it says in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1, remember that the foundational doctrine is repentance from works that lead to death and faith in God. The church has failed, dear friends, in presenting a very, very, very different gospel from the gospel that the Lord Jesus Christ presented. Because he was very clear, Matthew chapter 3 verse 2, repent and then a call to faith. The grace is revealed to say no to ungodliness. Grace is not a license to sin. We cannot keep our leg in both worlds. We cannot say, I will live according to the flesh and uh, I have a free ticket to get to heaven. Dear people of God, that is never the gospel from the Bible. And this is what I humbly want to place before you. Don't believe any preacher. Don't believe even me, but believe the word of God, the whole counsel of God. Not somebody who would proof text just half the gospel and try to sell you a lie. God bless you.